So, I've run into a problem. And the problem is right there where this CV joint connects into the other side. Um, if you look when the car is in a position, in this case it's high centered, where the back wheels, or where it won't move, and stress is being put on the back wheels because they can't move, but the motor's turning, um, and you try to turn the motor, you can see right there that it's just skipping um, and slipping. So, the and the problem is, um, I can't make it stronger, like, I can't use a stronger CV joint because that hole where the uh, other end is, is too small for the stronger one. The stronger one is a bit bigger, so that one is, the hole is too small. And I can't hold this like this because this is... Um, this moves as the suspension moves, this arm, so there's no way I could really hold it, um, securely. So, what I think I'm going to try is, um, I'm going to replace this CV joint with a U-joint, and the U-joint, if I use it, will push the pivot one, um, one beam length this way. Which is technically not good, but I think this thing doesn't use suspension enough that I, I don't think it'll make a difference. And if it's solid enough that it doesn't click, then that'll be better than this setup right here. So that's what I'm going to try. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, I don't know. downside currently to the setup I have with the battery box is uh, when the battery goes when the batteries go flat the side of the battery box where the batteries go in is inaccessible unless you take the battery box out and the battery box since I had to replace some mainframes um, is pretty stuck in there because it's part of what holds the vehicle together um, you can reach the on button for the battery box fine, and the cables all fit, but just replacing the batteries is an issue. So, you have, I have to take quite a lot of it apart in order to get to it. I guess since I'm taking it apart anyway, I'll go ahead and show you how I have um, all the motors and such rigged up. Um, so, I have three motors that drive it and one motor that steers, and that fills up all the ports on the uh, 
battery box. Um, I tried, originally I tried with two motors, but it was not strong enough to move the vehicle. Um, and so I added a third motor. Um, originally I had the piston engine right here, but in order to fit this motor, I had to take it out. So, uh, we have one motor here. One motor here, and if you look under it, we can see that those two motors I just pointed out are here and here. Um, I connected them. I wanted this to be as fast as possible, um, so I have it one-to-one -one up until this little black gear, and then um, I haven't figured out what this ratio is yet. Um, but if I, I'll figure it out and put it up on the screen. Um, so, but it's just one to one through a bunch of 16 tooth gears. And this one comes in through the top. Uh, actually, no. Yeah, it just comes in because, uh, the piston engine was directly hooked up to the differential straight through that axle to here. I just put the motor in at that level. Um, and because I had a one-to-one -one with these two motors to here, I didn't have to do any special gearing for this one. Um, and then for the steering motor, I would have mounted it. Um, I can't remember if it was higher or lower. I would have mounted it either higher or lower, but I did not want the, um, I didn't want the, uh, eight tooth gears. I would have mounted it. Yeah, I think it's right here. I would have mounted it at this level right here, but I didn't want the eight tooth gears. <clears throat> um, so no, wait, I can't remember now. Anyway, I didn't want the eight tooth gears, so I t got rid of them. Um, I do have a 12, 12 tooth to 20 tooth, uh, reduction and that seems fine for steering. Um, and I took out the seat to fit this motor. Um, but I didn't have to do much body work to get this motor in. Um, I had to do the most body work to get the hub in. <clears throat> there was two main frame pieces that ran right across here. Um, so I had to just extend these outwards and then go back in. Um, and then there were some pieces that it was obstructing up on top. And so I had to create this frame uh, that holds this piece on. Um, but yeah, let me get back to replacing the batteries. For the other side, take this one off, take the one off under it, put this one back on, can I go here, yeah, and now there's just one thing at the, at the bottom holding it on, oh, okay. An undetermined amount of finagling time later. And if it doesn't come out the bottom now, okay, yeah, there it goes. <laughs> and now I'm going to utilize, since I don't have any other small screwdrivers, I'm going to utilize a cube, Rubik's Cube screwdriver. Oh, it's slightly magnetized, it felt like. Well, yeah, I'll get back with you once I have the batteries in. And we're back, and I have got the batteries in. So now we basically just reverse the whole process. Um, it has to go in from the 
bottom. Okay. Um, just put these in. have this taken apart like this um, in here you can see I have the uh, tougher differential um, that is because when I didn't have the tougher differential it uh, the gears were slipping inside the differential so this was all solid none of these gears were slipping the ones inside the differential were slipping so I put the tougher one in and that took care of the problem the the gears here are no longer slipping back to reassembling So you may be wondering why I have the big wheels on it instead of the normal wheels it comes with. Um, and it's because originally when I just had the two motors in, um, I had the small wheels on and it was fine. It was extremely close to the ground because the ground clearance on the set um, is already really, really low. But with the added weight of the battery box and the three motors um it was just barely not skimming the ground and then when i when i added the third motor so it drive better um the weight was too heavy for it and it was it scraped the ground as uh as i drove it so um i just all i had to do to get to fit these wheels on was it usually has these fender pieces right over the front wheel like that um and i just took those off because it doesn't really need them and it does not scrape the front when it turns and drives um and with the caps on it looks really nice um because otherwise it would have the red um wheel but yeah but now it has quite a bit of ground clearance it's not about to scrape as it drives um, or scraping while it drives and honestly I really like how it looks with the off-road tires on it. it can be an off-road Formula One car <laughs> 